those contingencies in because on gray days, and you're all in different places, but many of you are in the New England area, on these gray days with the low pressure system, it is a good plan to try and back bend. Just because in terms of the geometries of the body, back bending, even if you were to sit here while I give the preliminary notes and take your arms out like a big yawn, oh, and just open the whole front line of the chest, the pec minors, and contract the extensors in the back of the shoulder. Maybe look up a little bit and stretch the scalenes or take the hands to the back of the head to support it as you do so. And just oh, open the jaw and yawn or fake it and feel what I call the psoas of the mouth. Psoas muscles being the connecting piece of the inner legs through the gut and into the back. But I've always thought myself that we have a psoas muscle in the jaw. Oh. So we'll just sit here and yawn for an hour. And actually, the held tension in the jaw and in the tongue has, can have a profound effect on the body. And you know why you yawn to try and get some more oxygen. So often on these low pressure days, doing some sort of yawn or back bending stretch is just going to feel good. Having said that, it's really important to have a few things in mind, and one being your lower body, and that as you launch the upper body as a brand heights of back bending, that your low back, which is really the major back bending piece of the spine, is not compromised. So if you have any lumbar disc issues that are in compression when you do an arch of your low back to initiate back bending, that's important to know. And to just back off so maybe you won't have quite as a, an aggressive a back bend. And you need to do a little bit more core support work. So before we even do our pranayama, stand up. And again, just experimental actions before class begins are really good to have. And what if we did that full yawn standing? So we start to reach up with the palms forward flip the palms to the sky to stretch the front of the arms right down to the armpits and press the hips a little bit forward, not too much. And now it's pulling the backs of the legs. So zip up from the, essentially the back of the knee to the butt bone to start to contract the hammies. Ah, and some of you who don't have any neck issues can trace your gaze on the inhale pattern all the way up. Others, again, what you want to do is start with a goalpost pattern and then take the hands line behind the head. Inhale, lift the armpits, lift and spread the shoulder blades, contract the backs of the legs, and then exhale. Settle into it. Inhale, come back up and exhale. Take a forward fold. So this could be bent knees with your morning body. You can hold up some elbows. Just drape your spine and lengthen it. Drop your hands, come up through the chair pose, bending your knees. Inhale and then exhale. Let's just do that a few times just to kind of get the body going. And again, you just don't even think yoga, think 
how you how would you yawn? You reach up, flip your palms like pancakes, stretch the fascia of the palms, maybe even open the fingers, like you're casting magic spells. And start to feel the arches of the feet come on board, like you just put tennis balls under your feet. Ah, inhale, we're going more up the back, tone the backs of the legs. Exhale, lean back a little more. Inhale, come up. And then bend the knees, slowly the head takes you down. Go easy. Depending on where your body is at this morning, drop the anchor of the head, drop the sitting bones and bent knees. Maybe pedal from one foot to the other. Drop the hands down. Come up with a rounded spine this time. Head is last. Before we do our last one, let's revisit the spiral pattern that we did last week and just do this simple Tai Chi action of spinning and you'll feel the muscles in the round side ribs, which are going to be important to back bending as well. We did a little bit of back bending at the end, I think, last week, entering Ustrasen from the side. And let's just stop on the, we're pointing to the left side, waiting our left foot to grab our right wrist. And our left hand is pull that right shoulder across. And then let's swing over to the right and reach over with our left hand, grab our left wrist with our right hand, just pull and just stretch the whole lateral spiral sheet like that. Okay, now when I'm saying to engage the backs and legs, why don't you take your hands, even if you're not a beginner, just under your, your butt to your upper handies, which tend to get a little, for most of us, a little soft and squishy. And so we need to tone these a lot as we get on. And we can do this in different ways. Later on, we'll do a a half moon pose, but right now, can you just stand firmly, tone the muscles of your legs, which for most of you, you would pat your quads to be like rocks, especially the rowers. But how about these hammies and the lateral glutes? What's going on back there? Is it marshmallow land or can, <laughs> can we make some hardness there. So if that's the case, and it is for most people, hard quads, tight quads, weak hamstrings, especially up here, that's not a great thing. So how do we learn to do that? So just try this for a second. You can put your hands on a chair or wall and just try to take your left foot back and then swing it up like that. Okay, just and you can keep, you see I'm keeping my left hand right under my butt. It's very exciting for me. And I'm just doing these leg curls so that I can get in touch with this muscle group. Okay, and then if I do the other side, I just grab right in this top of this hammy with the right hand and I balance. Maybe I need a wall in my left hand and I just do this. And I feel that this is a contraction of the hamstring, much omitted in yoga and much needed for any sort of back bending. Meanwhile, you're monitoring your low back if you have any lumbar issues and making sure that you don't take your hips out of symmetry. It's very isolated movement. So now you know what these upper hammies feel like. So can you tone them now? And let that tone start to take you up into your back bend now. Even if your head doesn't drop back, now the potato chip curl of the body, for me anyway, now is much greater, starting from the lower body. And wow, I'm going way back without even taking my head back. 
keeping those tone of those hammies, I could take my hands to my head. And then I keep that tone of the hamstrings when I come back up. Okay, let's take our blanket rolls, unless you have a, an aversion. So how did that feel on your low back? Is it a little bit intense, a little tweaky? So let's take the blanket rolls into our gut and just come down like this into a squat or even a forward fold and reset the core, Uddiyana Bandha complex of tone in the transverse abdominals so that we protect the low back. So ironically, these forward folds, and now you can take one with or without your, your towel roll are part and parcel of the back bending quest. Come down to Malasan, take our towel roll aside, and go as duck footed as you need to. Also, get the low back restored if the initial yawning or back bending experiment took you out of set. So, part of that is just to see what your body is capable of in back bending. And you see the yogis do extreme dropbacks from standing. And that's great uh, for some people and not so great for others. <laughs> so we're going to be moderate and experimental in our quest for back bending success. And also note that extreme back bending can cause disturbances in the nervous system and send it through the roof. So it's a very happy, on the one hand, Boolean geometry, but taken to the extreme, it can cause a lot of manic, wiry behavior. More on that later, but I just want to mention all the factors. Okay, so let's sit and do a little pranayama now that we've opened up the front line. This is called the deep front line of the body. We should be able to breathe even more readily, 20 breaths. Inhale and exhale, just feel the breath, how it can shape a a back bending pattern. But as usual, we're going to start down in the belly and not get too much into the chest heaving behavior. Maybe even taking hands at the belly if you did the back bending, standing, and it made you feel a little wiry. Then you go right down into the cellar. And the exhale, release the collarbones, the throat, face. We'll just do one round today. And you can open the mouth, open the jaw. Or you can keep your mouth closed and internalize the sound of Ujjayi Pranayama. One more inhale. One more exhale. Let the exhale trail off. Relax, release the belly. Pause.
So again, if you're a prani, pranasur, and you've been practicing this, you might go for quite a while and just be happy sitting But don't struggle. You start to feel a spasming in the diaphragm. That's when you know you inhale. And you pause there for 10 seconds, keeping the throat, jaw relaxed as the upper body fills. Again, a mild back bend through the use of your breath. Exhale, release. You return to a forward pole once again to reground. You can place your hands down, you can place your head down. So, in a way, as you inhale and exhale, the inhales and the exhales are a microcosm of the fact. The back bending and forward bending are an interplay. So you'd never just do a complete back bending practice without forward folding. Otherwise, your body would be craving the forward folding. Your mind would be off in the stratosphere. So that's what we're going to do today is to just feel the interplay of forward folding and its importance with back. The first exercise I want you to do before we go on to our backs is to un unfurl your towel roll. Just have a have a little towel. It can be a little pad of the towel. Hopefully you have a you have a wood floor like me and roll up your yoga mat to, so that your towel can go back and forth like this. If not, if you've got a carpeted floor, you might not need the towel roll. You can just drag your feet along the carpet. Take your hands back like you're at the beach. And of course, I could just lift the chest now and contract the muscles in the shoulder blades with a big inhale. And then an exhale. And we'll do this a few times. I've got my fingers pointing out. I'm going to keep my neck in the Jalandarabandha pattern, like a seahorse, keeping the chin and the head neutral as I let the chest come up, opening the front line of the upper body as I inhale, squeezing the back extensors, exhale. Now, how about the legs? If we were to just pull the feet back toward us on inhale and then exhale forward. Can you do that a few times? And you don't have a wood floor and a towel, you're gonna have to improvise. So what are we doing here? We're just feeling how earlier on we had you use those upper hammies right under here to reel in the legs. So you can lean back, inhale, and now the legs are on board, and then exhale. And a little, little gymnastics here. Even now, try bending your elbows a little bit and pulling your legs in, and exhale like that. All we're trying to do is feel and just work with your breath, inhale, and exhale the muscle components. So now as I drag the towel, roll back or the feet back and inhale pattern, you know, lift up to reverse table. Exhale. And this is for people that feel like morning bodies a lot. And then I re straighten my legs. Inhale, I coil. Engaging the backs of the legs, pulling the heels to the hips. Hips come up and turn. Exhale. And you only drop the head back if 
you don't have any neck issues. Otherwise, you keep the jaw and our bone. Put the hips down, slide the legs forward. Inhale, coil. The coil pulls the hips up. Exhale, consolidates the back. Okay, so maybe you're not lifting your hips, you're just coming back, lifting your chest, and sliding your legs forward. Let's take a forward fold like this and grab our feet and keep our knees slightly bent. And now we get our forward fold regrounding. Pull against your bind, lengthen your spine. And you can slide your legs long if you like. Okay, so let's come up and then take your towel roll, make it into a, a roll again. And let's just do a little work on our backs. And we've done most of this work before, but the first thing we're gonna do, and this satisfies the folks that jumped on thinking they were gonna get the the healing work, which all yoga is. We're gonna just scrape the towel roll down the back body. And I've done this work before. Starts with the towel roll behind the neck and then progressively works down the back so that we can prepare the fascia in the back body for back pain. Now some people use a foam roller and that's fine. I have, it's a quick and dirty method of working your fascia. You'll see people do this sort of thing, right? Doing kind of what we just did and scraping the, or massaging the fascia in the back of the body, the dorsal sheath. But there's a theory among a lot of body work people that foam rollers being hard simply harden or callous the fashion. So here's what we do. Make sure you're not too close to the wall and you start with your knees bent and just right in the space of your neck, take a nice cow roll and you're gonna just start to move your, about lifting your hips Sacral tilts, inhale, you arch the spine and the hips move forward and exhale, you roll back. This is also gonna slightly traction the cervical spine for those of you that might be over 50 years old who are experiencing some arthritis in the neck. So it's just a good little draw like a mother cat pulling on the kitten's neck gently. As the hips roll forward on inhale, the arms straight out to the sides. It's a mild back bend with extension in the back of the neck, which is nice. So as the hips roll forward on inhale, the chin comes toward the chest, the arms are open, exhale your release. Okay, and let's just pull the knees into the both hands and Stretch out that low back. Again, we do our back knitting work and we set the feet back down. Now you're gonna crawl your way. You can roll left and right and start to commando crawl. So if you haven't done this with me, there's a few people, Jeannie and others who haven't. Roll off to the side and watch. I'm gonna backstroke my shoulder blades and roll from left to right over the towel roll. Lift my hips a little bit. Walk my feet back to me until I get that towel roll. Now under the tops of the shoulder blades and the arms can either be straight out or goal posted. Now I'm in a little more of a back bend. And if it's too uncomfortable, reduce your towel roll. And just walk your feet back under your knees. And now this time, instead of 
sacral tilt, we lift the hips up off the mat. So we're doing bridge pose and we're getting a nice little sensation of the towel roll into the fibers of the mid back. And if you have any T spine or thoracic spine compressions, it's this nice little scrub. You just hold this, and guess what? When you come up to bridge, you have another opportunity to tone those upper hands to prepare for or support back bending. So, this bridge pose with towel roll is a mild back bend. And then you come down, and again, if it's too much on your head, you can take your fingers under your head and support it a little bit. But otherwise, you're going to roll your knees to the left, your head to the left. Inhale the center, roll your knees to the right, and just start to scrub along the spiral sheets. Okay, and then as we roll from left to right, we're going to, to walk our shoulder blades over the towel roll a little bit more. So we're on the tips of the shoulder blades. And walk your feet back under your knees. Get your neck and shoulders in a comfortable position. And again, if you can't goal post or right angle, your arms will reach out like you're embracing the sky and then lift your hips up again. Inhaling, of course, contracting the backs of the legs as we did moments ago when I had you drag your heels back toward your hips. So you're toning, you're contracting the backs and legs. So now the upper body is hanging out and breathing into that towel roll, experiencing the next piece of the spine, fascia, in the mid to lower T spine. Stay to your heart's content. Come down with the hips, exhale, and just roll the knees one way, roll the other way with the head roll. And it's just a playful, therapeutic way to open up the front line. So the pec minors and the fronts of the shoulders are being opened as we roll from side to side, the back's being scrubbed. Let it feel good. And if it doesn't, reduce the towel roll or maybe eliminate it. So now we're going to just crawl our way a little bit, a little bit forward until we're now between the mid spine and the lumbar spine. It's about the last place you can come up before losing contact with the towel. And as you come up, if you come up a little higher, you've completely lost the towel roll from contact with your back, toning the back of the legs and breathe. But you can now, without looking at my the video screen, while you're up, slide with your hands the towel roll forward to your low back and set your lumbar, or rather your sacrum, at the end of the lumbar on the towel roll. So slide the towel roll there and Pull your knees into your shoulders to stretch the low back once again. Again, after back bending, forward bending. Okay, let's set the feet down. One more bridge, normal, palms pressing, back to the wrist, floating off the hips. Inhale, what's going on? The breath is going down into the diaphragm and the backs of the legs are toning. As if you're pulling and dragging your hips back toward you, that in turn on exhale allows the backs and shoulders, the chest open. So to mitigate the piling of weight into the back of your head, your backs of your legs are toning as if you're dragging your knees forward. 
Let's see if you can reach one hand under the towel roll, slide it away to the side and pull your knees one last time into your body. Maybe a little rolling from side to side. Maybe a little happy baby. Again, to satisfy the low back. Okay, so let's go ahead and hold our knee creases and knock and roll with tuck chins up to the basin. And if you can't do this, you roll off to the side. And we're going to come right up and come to hands and knees. So a couple props are in play here. One is the towel roll and your floor, either wooden or carpeted. And if it's wooden, we're going to sit in your and do our Cinderella scrubs the floor exercise. That I've now patented on YouTube and made quite a bit of money. In fact, I won't be able to teach you anymore because I'm going on tour with all of my tricks. Maybe in 20 years. So before that, here's our Virasan. So here's another part of the back fitting picture. Some people, I don't know if Doreen's here, do not like the Virasan. The knees get a little Squeaky. So, a couple things to note. One, try to keep your knees as close together as you can. Try not to go into a, a wide knee pad. And two, if you need to sit on something like a, a block or what have you, some books, that's fine too. But Veer Austin will stretch the anterior tibialis right in front of the shins, and we're going to need that a little bit for back fitting. But we put our hands on the towel, and you've all done this before. I'm going to lift the hips a little and inhale, slide the towel roll forward, and exhale, drag it back. Scrubbing the floor, inhale. And exhale. Just do that about 10 times and you can work to the diagonal planes and feel the opening of the front line of the arm just like we did when we did our yawns. Okay, you're off and running. I'm just going to grab my water. And do the diagonal patterns. Now, if you've got a cranky morning body, then of course you can take your reach forward, place your head on the ground, tone the backs of the legs like you're retracting the other direction, and hang out. Tone the Uriyana Banda core, soften the jaw. And you're going to feel those subscapularis and the armpits needing to stretch. So if you find a place of stickiness in your body, hang out by all means. But let's come back to Virasan when you're ready. And now if you don't have a strap, you could just unfurl your towel and use it as a strap. And what I'm going to do now is, is further open my upper body back bending mechanism by taking a pretty long strap. I'm going to go wider than the shoulders. And again, if your asana is, becomes uncomfortable, just go to supasana cross legs as you go over the rainbow. Inhale. On inhale, and then exhale down. Now you're really going to feel that inner arms to the armpit ribs, the, from the armpits, those collarbones, and exhale. And as you do this now, forget about me and my wonderful yellow t-shirt from the Two at Rowing Club folks. 
representing the sun on a non-sunny day. Feel your body and what's going on here in terms of the reach back. So the back extensors are contracting, shoulder blades. A lot of muscles, teres, and the rhomboids, and the supraspinatus, all those goodies that you don't even need to know the names of, except it potato chips and opens the chest in a much more dynamic, strength-based way. And now what's going on in the hips? Are they in the low back? Is it trying to help out and arch? Can you keep the sitting bones pressed down to the heels a little bit as you hang out here so that you don't overextend your low back just yet? And then while we're here, we might as well open up the arms a little more and we'll drop our strap from our right hand down the back and our right elbow and take our left hand behind us to hook up on the strap and just pull the strap a little bit to lift the chest. And you can press your head right back into your right forearm like that. And again, we're toning, learning to tone some of the muscles in the back extensors. Now, advanced folks, you know that you can come up like an instrus and tone the backs of the hammies as we've been doing. And that will anchor the pelvis and the low back as you start to drift your gaze toward the sky. Ah, smooth breath, running like an aquifer through the body. And by keeping my head back against my right forearm, I'm supporting it and not compressing the discs. And this one is going to open, is opening up this right side a bit more subscap. Then we go to the other side. Again, you could use a towel. Some of you don't need anything. You can just hook up your hands. Left elbow bends right arm behind the back. You can work down here. Gently pull the strap and the fingers together and work the elbows a little bit outward, a little bit backward. Umukasan is the cow-faced pose. We're only affecting the first part of it or the upper body part of it in the, you can stay down or come up, squeeze the lateral glutes, the back of the hammies, and let the upper body be free to roam with prana and ujjayi. The elbows are representing the ears of the cow, komukasana. And it's cow face pose. And so then we travel down. Yay, 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 yay. That's a little bit of work for the upper body. So let's just take a child's pose. We can take our mat and unfurl it. And you guessed that we need, we're in need of a back, a forward band after that. So your old friend, the child's pose is always handy as you drop your hips down to your heels and stretch your arms forward. So this is more officially known as extended child's pose because now we've opened the arms in the upper body mid back structure for back bend. And even simple old child's pose has elements of extension in the upper body, but it's it's settling the low back. And I've shown you, I think last week, the wonderful therapeutic way to scrub your low back with a towel, putting it back here, just with your hands scraping the smash it down toward your sitting bones. 
Let's launch a downward dog now, hands and knees, inhale. Exhale, toes curl under, come back, and pedal out of each foot. The arm should be in pretty good shape, reaching forward and spreading the shoulder blades across the back like wing, wings and just letting the neck be comfortable and extended from the crown of the head. So you can peek back at your toes and you pedal them. With that big toe mount, outer heel connection. And then we'll come forward to high plank and go down to our hands and knees and back down to your awesome again. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a towel roll handy in front of our knees like this. And then whatever's the most comfortable way for you to do it, you're going to get into a low lunge. And you're going to take that towel roll, which you may need to make even a bigger diameter. Or if you are not a towel roll fan, you could even put the back knee, the left knee for me, on a yoga block. That would be a little intense. Then, if you're a Spartan or a Stoic, don't use any towel roll. So let's just come into a low lunge because we know we need to stretch the hip flexor in the back and place your hands in the front knee and lift the chest and breathe. Now, the flexible people I know Cherie is here are often tempted to drift towards their maximum stretch. And that can feel delicious, but it's also, like many delicious things, dangerous. Too much chocolate, not so good. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna go back and forth, inhale and exhale, and we're gonna refine our upper hamstring again. So as we retract, exhale, can you take your left hand to the back of that left hammy, and as you pull back out of your deeper lunge, can you tone that puppy? As one of my teachers used to say, lift those puppies. <laughs> and it was a female instructor, so I can get away with it. Okay, so this is important that this back hamstring is, is working now for you in back pain. So as we settle into a modest proposal of this posture, we're going to tone this or retreat this left hamstring. That's going to stretch the front part, right? The hip flexor is being stretched by the contractions back here. Very Press the hand into it. Now reach up to the sky with your right arm. Inhale. Lift the sails of prana in your heart. Way up. And then take your right hand behind your skull and ah. Breathe. Supporting your skull, toning your back hand strength. Ah. Now we have the back bend. Reach up and release. Oh boy. Let's take the hands to the floor and start to stretch out that front leg, lifting the toes. And you can do that once again a few times. Find the back left hamstring, reach up, inhale. Hand behind head, exhale. And then you come down, place the fingers, stretch the front leg. Now advanced folks, instead of just stretching the front leg, you can come into your full parasotanasa, lifting the back knee, folding over the front leg to your degree. 
So you got your forward fold, and then you drop your back knee, set up your hands, inhale up you go, exhale further drop, inhale you come up, exhale you plant, toes curl under, front leg straighten. So one more time, wherever your ability lies, kick out the back toes, fire up the, the back of that left hand you reach up, up, up. Keep your elevation as you exhale, drop back. So we keep the disc from compression as we back. Bend. Don't overdo this. And then you find respite in a forward fold, either just staying kneeling and straightening the front leg or taking a few breaths now in your ultimate partial tendency. Okay, so let's come back to hands and knees. And let's take a downward dog or a child's pose, your choice to regain symmetry. Stretching the arms long, drawing the belly in, maybe bending the knees, lifting the heels, contracting the backs of the legs, even in down dog. And then resetting the heels. Take a peek if you've never done this one. Heels left. Back so the hammies can track and then lengthen. So again, I find this contraction and lengthening of the hammies. Then I come forward to plank and come to hands and knees. Then I'm going to do the other side of the low lunge. And I can cab my right knee if I want, right in the base of the quad. And I drop down on inhale and exhale. Come up. It's very subtle. I'm working with the tidal rhythm of my breath and my morning body. This is not the Jane Fonda workout procedure. This is yogic inhale, feel the body, exhale, don't force the body into the geometries, work with it. So of course, most people, and I'm no exception, the right quad is tighter. But now I can get the right hand involved in the back of that right hamstring. As I exhale, I'm gonna just contract it a little bit. By contracting it, I'm actually getting a deeper stretch in my right hip flexor than I would just passively yin yoga in my way into a dangerous lunge. So I contract, I tone, and now I launch the sails, left arm way up. Take the hand behind the scalp for safety in a mirror of Bumblecossin. And exhale, I drift back, keeping tone in the back of that right leg. Inhale, come back up. Place the hands on the floor, or if you need to, a chair. Begin to straighten the front leg. So it could be just sitting back and straightening your left leg like that. Try it again. Get your hands in place. By now, you know, you can inhale, come forward. Exhale, hold the back of the Right glute, upper hand, you reach up, inhale. Exhale, support the back of the head. Ah, for most of you. Some of you, okay, fine. Take it further back. Be safe. Now, you're going to take that forward fold over the front leg or the advanced folks, pull your right toes under, fold over your straight front leg. 
five breaths. Press your feet into the floor. Draw your belly in. Lengthen the back of the skull. Lengthen the arms. My favorite thing to do with flexibility is to walk the fingertips forward of the front foot, press forward. In the same action we had in Cinderella, as we scrub the floor with our towels, oh, I open the armpits. For some, that's just not happening this week. Can we do one more? We set the back knee down. We have the hands in place. Go forward, inhale. That's the lazy person's way. All right, and then exhale. We draw into the tone of the right hamstring. Inhale, left arm up. Ah, oh, maybe supporting the back of the head, but if you don't have any issues, whoa. You can go back and up. All right. One more forward fold over that front foot for good measure, either kneeling or now stretching the legs apart. Tone, tone the legs. And then we come back to downward dog in whatever manner is comfortable. After five breaths and down dog, you're going to come down to your hands and knees and re grab your towel roll and place it down in front of you. And now we're going to work a little more deeply into this. Are you a back tilter or a posture tilter? Hands to your posture tilter with your hips. Can you just take your hands to your hips? and do sacral tilts. So, as I mentioned before, as we back bend, if we were to launch into an astrosin, for example, here, a camel pose, let's come up and just feel this. The knees not too far apart. I'm gonna to tone these puppies. And then we're going to place our hand, hands into the front of the hip flexors and press the hips into the hands. And very mildly start to tone the backs of the legs, lift the chest. And I want you to just feel what's going on in your low back. So if you feel compression, then you've got to know that. And some instructors will have you take your hands to your low back now with the fingers up and press the sitting bones and the pelvis down to try and mitigate the lumbar compression. But what about the tone of the backs and legs? Can that help you? I think it can, rather than just trying to use your hands like a chiropractor. Can you try that again? Everyone take your hands to your low back. So sure, I could start to slide my, if I'm pushing the, my pants down, my back. But what if I tone the backs of the legs? Just like we were doing in low lunge, we had our hands individually here. What if they're collectively now down in the hammies and we're toning? Wow, now as I tone, I can limbo my way back. But go easy. And then if you experience any compression in your low back, you take your child's pose or even press your hands down to the tops of your legs and the tops of the quads. And just stilt your arms straight, stretch out your low back. So this is really important stuff. Now we're going to come after a brief downward dog, stretch all that out. Mm. 
we're going to come on to our tau rolls on our belly so that we can investigate and investigate here in easy cobra the workings the finer workings of the hip flexors and the backs of the legs i'm going to put that towel roll in the front of my hips just touching my low belly and just roll out the low belly with my rolling thin towel roll i roll from left to right well so this part of that deep front line that we need to open for back bending in conjunction with the tone of the backs and the legs. So can you put your palm, palms on top of one another and the floor and place your head down now and just listen. Throw your toes under, inhale and just exhale. Press your frontal hip bones into the floor. Inhale again, you can mildly arch your low back. Maybe even lifting your chest to take a peek. Exhale, the head goes down. You press your frontal hip bones into the ground. Toning the backs and legs. Inhale up and exhale down. So you're learning to use that fishtail technology. Now you're going to keep, come up for a second, easy cobra, separate your arms, so parallel forearms, lift your chest, and notice what happens to your low back as you kick your toes back out. And is your low back feeling pinching? So can you tone the backs of your legs? And it'll help if you scrub your toes back toward you. So zip up from the heels or more importantly, the backs of the knees to the glutes. Can you zip that up? Can you zip it up? And that's going to help your low back. Super important and a little bit hard to do. And then place the hands down, place the head down, and press your hips into the towel roll. Okay, come back up to easy cobra now and roll over to the right side like you're going to look over your left shoulder and then roll over to the left side look over your right shoulder like a seal on a beach you can just even start to lift the knee of the side you're looking toward so now i'm going to roll over to my right hip and look over my left shoulder just drag the right knee up bend it like that. And just breathe here. Press your right hip into the mat and the towel roll. For those that want to add a little twist, go ahead and slide your left arm forward and thread the needle. Right arm under the left arm, but then roll onto your back like that. Should feel pretty good. Bye. Roll back, come up and slide that left leg back. And again, toning the backs of the legs, pressing your hips into the towel roll. Go ahead and roll onto your left hip and drag your right knee forward. You're creating a little lizard pose on the right side. Square off. And how's your low back now? Can you keep, keep that tone in the back of the left hammy? Stay here and work the deep front line stretch or thread the needle. Slide your right hand forward and your left arm goes under your right armpit, you roll open to your degree into a twist. Come back, find your cobra now and see how the low back feels now. Now we're gonna do some cobra push-ups. So watch first, and if you don't like the towel roll, get rid of it. 
It's now more in my belly than my hips, which is fine. And I'm going to use this action or toning of the backs, the panties, to lift the chest up in what I call cobra push ups. I place the head down and hands are back to the side of the shoulders. And I inhale, and lift the chest, toning the backs and legs, and exhale, come down. Inhale, tone the hand knees, press the hips into the towel roll, and exhale, come down. So work that about, oh, 10 or 20 times, being very mindful of your low back. And then we'll close off class. So you should begin to feel now that whole Samana Vayu opening up. And this would allow some of you, the advanced students, to come up quite high before you roll back. Take a child's pose by walking your knees toward you and place your head on the towel roll and restore order to your low back. You can take a final downward dog. You can take whatever you like to add. Some half pigeons. But time being as it is, we'll pick up the rest of our practice an investigation into this work on Wednesday, Benny Luck. And do take a few breaths in Shavasan. And when we do back bending work, we can do the normal Shavasan, or you can actually flip your body over back onto your chest and hips and do the same hands over the forehead motion to just relax and release the ventral side of the body. You can stay there as long as you want, but when you're ready, coming up to seated, and we'll close off before we run over too long. So hopefully it was a good intro to the ventral sheet, back bending sheet that was safe. And we'll pick it up on Wednesday with more excitement. Namaste.